بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على ظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد طيب إن شاء الله ترزيم from last lesson who is the author of the book? Huh? Abdullah Bukhari, a Sheikh. Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari, Hafizullah Ta'ala. Does anybody know any of the scholars that he studied with? Huh? Sheikh Rabi. Anyone else? Sheikh Ubaid, Rahimullah. Make dua for them behind after their names, whether they're alive or they passed away. So they get some ajar. Aywa. Anyone else? Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Hafizullah. Huh? Anyone else? Sheikh Muhammad, Aman Jami, Rahimullah. Who was the one that said the statement, Ya Ma'ashar al-Muslimin, al-Khashaba, tuhin ila Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shawkan ila liqa'ihi, ila al-akhiri. O Muslims, if a piece of wood, shajara, yearns to listen to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ma'ashallah min ba'id, al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimullah. Maybe inshallah we'll start. So today we're going to start with the first right. Al-Haqq al-Awwal. Al-Haqq al-Awwal. And that is to have belief in the Prophet. Al-Imanu bin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we have mentioned, under each title, there are matters and issues. So from this one, the first one, Al-Matlub Al-Awwal, Ma'na Al-Iman Bin Nabi. So the first one here is the meaning of belief in the Prophet. The meaning of belief in the Prophet. So the meaning of the belief in the Prophet, some of the people of knowledge have explained the meaning. The meaning of belief in the Prophet. And they have said that it is tasdiquhu wa ta'atuhu wa ittiba'u shariyatihi. For those who want to write the Arabic, tasdiquhu wa ta'atuhu wa ittiba'u shariyatihi. And the, or some of the scholars have said that it is to believe in him, to obey him, and to follow his sharia. وَلِهَذَا قَالَ الْأَحْلُ الْعِلْمِ تَصْدِيقُهُ يَلْزِمُ مِنْهُ أَمْرًا This is why the people of knowledge have said, believing in the messenger Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Necessitates Two things So make sure you Your notes Are done in a way where you understand them It's a mushkila when you get home And you don't know what you have jotted down Qad yahsul it happens But do it in a tartib In a way So you know what the ma'na is what, If I say to you in the exam Mathalan that what is the, what has Ahlul Ilm, what have the scholars said regarding the belief in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want you to say, Tasdiquhu wa ta'atuhu wa tiba'u shariatihi. Tamam? Then, this necessitates two things. The first thing that it necessitates, so manage your notes well, the first thing that it necessitates, Ithbat, 
نبوته صلى الله عليه وسلم وصدقه فيما بلغه عن ربه جل وعلا وأن ذلك مختص به so the first thing that it necessitates having iman with the prophet is affirmation of his prophethood meaning you affirm that he is a prophet and his prophethood and to believe he is truthful in all what he conveys about his lord that you believe he is truthful in that he's a truthful person in all that which he conveys from his lord and this is specific for him alone mukhtas bihi meaning bringing this risala from allah azza wa jal and conveying is for him alone so that's the first one say okay? that's the first thing that it necessitates the second one تصديقه فيما جاء به صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنه جاء جاء به من عند الله وأنه واجب التباع. The second one that it entails is to believe in all that which he comes with that it is from Allah سبحانه وتعالى the mighty and majestic and that it is obligatory to follow what's the slight difference between the two wouldn't you say that they carry the same kind of meaning one and two because the first one says affirmation of his prophethood and the second one we say that we believe that all which he comes from is from his lord what's the precise difference the first one you are affirming that he is a prophet and that you are affirming that he is a truthful person and this of bringing of the message is only for him the second one you are believing that what he comes with is from Allah and it's from Allah and it is obligatory to follow that so the second one is that you believe that it is from allah because a person could be truthful in what they speak but when the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaks about the deen of islam he is truthful yes and it should be believed but what he is relaying and conveying is from allah so the sheikh then he goes on to say therefore it is obligated to believe in all what the prophet informs about allah in all affairs umur al mughayyibat the affairs of the unseen as it relates to paradise and the hellfire and the promise the warnings meaning the promise which allah has promised what the believers will get the warnings of those who turn away do not repent and they meet allah without the warnings we believe in all of that we believe in the punishment of the grave and its bliss and all that what he informs about his lord in every aspect we believe then the sheikh he brings the verse qala allah jalla wa az wa ma yantiqu an al hawa in huwa illa wahyun yuha Allah the mighty the majestic states nor does he speak of his own desire it is only revelation that is inspired to him surah an-najm verse 3 and 4 those of you that can't write all the verse down then make sure you get the references i've tried my best to bring all of the references so surah an-najm verse 3 and four al matlab thani the second matter fi nawaqid al iman bin nabi 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second matter is that which nullifies belief in the Prophet. Nawaqidul iman bin Nabi. That which nullifies belief. Meaning if this is occurred, then you don't, it nullifies. You don't have belief in the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nawaqid al-Iman tanqasimu ila qismain. These nullifiers of belief in him are in two categories. The first category is al-ta'nu fi shaqsihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first category is to speak or criticize his character. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Shaykh gives you the categories first, then he'll go into detail. So let me just give you the categories first. The second one, أَطَّعْنُ فِي مَا أَخْبَرَ بِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِنْ دِينِ اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَزْ إِمَّا بِإِنْقَارِ أَوْ إِمَّا بِإِنْتِقَاسِ The second category is to ridicule what he informs about the religion of Allah, the mighty and the majestic. And that is either by outright denial or disparagement. So those are the two categories. Now we're going to talk in detail about each category. So the Sheikh, he says, <clears throat> so the first category is that you malign, meaning disparage, defame the character of of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what enters into this also is to ascribe to the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anything that contravenes with Allah choosing him as a messenger to convey his religion and his sharia to the creation. So that is the first one. To elaborate upon that, if you were to criticize him as a character, or if you used to criticize anything, Allah Azza wa Jalla has chosen him as a prophet, and Allah Azza wa Jalla has mentioned certain attributes of him. And if you were to criticize any of those attributes, or anything which he relays, then that is, uh, uh, the F1, if you used to criticize any and ascribe that to them, then this is, Ta'an in the first category. This is criti criticism in the first category. The second one, an F1, the Sheikh says here, Wa kullu thalik, F1, I didn't mention, Aw man sabba, I knew there was something missing, Aw man sabba nabi, Aw alhaqa naqsan fi nafsihi, Aw nasabihi. And what falls into this also, is that if you was to criticize the integrity, the virtuousness of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Sidqihi or if you was to talk about his honesty, disparage his honesty or the goodness or if you was to revile him in any of his attributes or if you was to attribute to any of his attributes flaws within himself or any of his qualities. So there is a lot of detail there. So what falls into this also is, is to criticize his integrity or his honesty or his goodness or if someone was to revile him or attribute to him any flaws within himself or his family or any of his qualities, or to speak ill of him, all of this, and Allah's refuge is sought, is disbelief in Allah. Shaykh, he says, وَكُلُّ ذَلِكَ وَيَعْذُ بِاللَّهِ قُفْرٌ بِاللَّهِ It is disbelief in Allah Azza wa Jal. The second category, هو طعن فيما أخبر به الرسول 
فإن هذا من نواقض الإيمان به. The second category is to disparage that which the messenger has narrated. Verily, this is from the acts that nullify Iman. And we have mentioned previously that this is either done by denying him or disparaging him. إِمَّنْ يُكُونَ بِالْإِنْقَارِ أو بإنتقاصه. Then we move on to the third matter. The third matter, أدلة القرآن والسنة على وجوب الإيمان بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The third matter is. Is this pace okay or is it too fast, too slow? Talk to me because the main thing is you're getting it down. Because you know I normally talk much faster than this. I'm exaggerating to try to do as clear as possible. But is the pace okay? I am Mumtaz. Is it okay? So you got all the notes? Okay, I'll be checking. Babe, so what matter are we on now? The third matter which falls under what? Which right? The first right, which is the iman with, with the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the third one is evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah upon the obligation of belief in the Prophet. So this is, alhamdulillah, wa yatamayyuzuna salafiyun. This is the criteria of the Salafiyun, Adilla, with proofs. This is how we are different from others. So now we're going to come the proofs of this point. The Sheikh, he says, Tawafarat ayyul ahibba, nususul kitab wa sunnah ala wujub al iman bin nabi. That the evidence is from the Quran and the Sunnah concur. And support each other. From Quran and Sunnah, they support one another. So then he starts with the proof. The first one is the statement of Allah, the Most High. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَكِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوا بُخْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُخْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا Surah Al-Fatih, verse Nine. The statement translated In order that you, mankind May believe in Allah and his messenger That's the shahid We should know what the proof is from the ayah Not just quote and memorize The shahid is in order that you, mankind May believe in Allah and his messenger That's the shahid And that you assist and honor him And that you glorify Allah Azza wa Jal's praise morning and afternoon. Surah Al-Fatih, verse 9. The next proof is a statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, the mighty and the majestic. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَنُورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلْنَا وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ التَّغَابٌ, verse 8. Therefore, believe in Allah and his messenger. That's the shahid again. Believe in Allah and his messenger. Proof that is obligatory to believe in the messenger. So to believe in Allah and his messenger and in the light. And the light here the Mufassirun have said is the Quran. Which we have sent down. And Allah is all aware of what you do. The next proof وَيَقُولُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Surah Al-Ali Imran, verse 132. And obey Allah and the Messenger, that you may obtain mercy. Next proof, 
statements of Allah Azza wa Jal, Qul Allah wa Rasul. Say, O Muhammad, obey Allah and the Messenger. Ali Imran, verse 32. Kama qulna, as the Shaykh he said, that the proofs from the Quran and the evidences from the Quran are many, as we have mentioned. Then we move on to, then he moves on to evidences from the Sunnah. Then he says, min sunnah aydan, ala minha. He said, also the evidences from the Sunnah, they are many. However, we will limit to two of them. Two we will take. So the first one, ما أخرج مسلم في الصحيح من حديث أبي حريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال عمرت أن أقاتل الناس حتى يشهدوا أن لا إله إلا الله ويؤمنوا بي وبما جئت بي. This narration is different from the, the, the common one that you're aware of. فإذا فعلوا ذلك أصموا مني دماءهم وأموالهم إلا بحقها وحسابهم على الله. So a rough translation of that and the shahid is that Abu Huraira says that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said I have been ordered to fight the people until they testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth and that they believe in me. That's the shahid. The reason I'm saying shahid is that is the part that is the proof of that actual textual evidence. So I want you to be familiar with that because I may ask you just to write the shahid of the hadith in an exam, مثلاً, or when I'm questioning you. So the shahid here is that, that they believe in me and that which I have come with. Right? Until the end of the hadith. So if they do that, then their blood and their wealth is safeguarded from me unless it pertains to a right of Islam and their reckoning is with Allah. That is in Sahih Muslim. Make sure you have understood the shahid. What does shahid mean? Literally, what does it mean? Huh? Huh? That's all it means. Mahalla shahid, sahih. Taib. But what does shahid also mean? No, if I say, for example, um, if someone, hadha ja'a wahid bin kharija darabahu, then I say, ana shahid, right hadha. What does that mean then? A witness. Taib. Shahid here means, when we mention it with, the, with textual evidences, we are referring to the, not the witness, the what? The point where it is a proof for us. For him to because I know those who are learning Arabic may think that shahid, what shahid, what shahid, shahid is a witness and here it's something else. So it's our duty to clarify. In the Arabic language, one word has no, numerous meanings. The next proof. وَأَخْرَجُوا شَيْخَانْ فِي صَحِيحَيْهِمَا وَلَوْذْ لِمُسْلِمْ Also, this is taken from Bukhari and Muslim, but the wording that we will use now is the wording of Imam Muslim. Qissatu irsal Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mu'adhan ila al-Yamani. When the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent mu'adh to Yemen. Wa mimma qala lahu and what he said to him, innaka ta'ti qawman min ahli al-kitab. Fad'uuhum ila shahadatin la ilaha ila Allah wa anni rasulullah. Fa inhum ata'uuka li thalik فَأَعْلِمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهُ فَتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتِ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ وَاللَّيْلَةِ The next one is when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh, may Allah be pleased with him, to Yemen. I'll mention the translation, you tell me where the Mahal al-Shahid is. Okay? Is it Mu'adh? You will come to a people of the book, the scriptures. 
So invite them to testify that there is no dirty, no deity worthy of worship in truth, except for Allah alone, and I am the messenger of Allah. Huh? There it is. I am the messenger of Allah. If they obey you in that, then tell them that Allah has enjoined upon them five prayers. If they obey you in that is also a shahid. If they obey you in that, if they accept that, meaning that is obligatory for them to accept, then I have enjoined five prayers upon them every day and night. However, the, the, the narration in Sahih Muslim has the wording, and I think it's munasib to mention, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلُ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يُوَحِّدُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ That the first thing that you should call them to is they should worship me alone, single me alone in worship. The benefits that we get from this narration is for those of you that are in the Maidan of Dawah that will be calling, or everybody, every one of us are, are in the Maidan of Dawah Maidan of Dawah in the realms of giving Dawah somewhat they are levels even if you give Dawah to your family you're giving Dawah however what we learn from this hadith is that ma the first thing that you call them to is Ahamshay the most important thing the most important thing is you call them to the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal then there on after regarding the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then the salah then the zakat then the fasting wa hakada and this is what we take benefit from this that whenever you are calling people to the religion call to the most important one don't go to the one that is less important everything is important مثلا somebody who's doesn't know anything about Allah doesn't know about anything about Tawheed and you want to call to him then you don't talk to him about his isbal of his trousers or the length of his beard. That's, that's not the first thing that you do. You call to the tawheed. We go back to, inshallah, the fourth matter now. The fourth matter, al matlub al rabi في عموم في عموم بعثته للثقلين. The fourth matter, his message was both to mankind and jinn. So the messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم, was sent both to mankind and the jinn also. تقرير هذا بين وظاهر لمن تأمل القرآن. Was sunnah. Confirmation of this is clear for the one who contemplates over the Quran and the Sunnah. So from the Quran, so now we this category is proofs of what? What proofs are we gonna mention now? Asant. Have you got that down as a chapter heading? So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his message was both for mankind and jinn. That's your major, that's the fourth matter. Now we're going to bring proofs of this. So from the Quran, قُلْ يَا أَيُّوَ النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا Surah Al-A'raf, verse 158. Say, O Muhammad, O mankind, verily I, I am sent to you as a messenger of Allah to the whole of mankind. 158. And his statement also, Wa arsalnaka lin nasi rasula. And we have sent you, O Muhammad, as a messenger to mankind. Where's the shahid in the verses? Nurse. Yeah? Jami'an, yes. Jami'an, you can use. To, and nurse is nurse. Arsalnaka lin nurse rasula. 
and we have sent you to mankind as a messenger. Is that a proof, nurse? Is nurse a proof? You know the word nurse. What does it mean? Huh? Mankind. Does the jinn enter into that? No. Aywa. Shaykh al Kursi, does he does he enter? It does. But Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in Surah Al Nas, Min al Jinnati wan Nas. So are they the same? Min al Jinnati wan Nas. This this ayah shows that they are separate. But you know the the you know the rule of al Iman wal Islam when they come together. Okay, let's see what Ibn Manzur says in Lisan al-Arab. Lisan al-Arab huwa mu'jumun lughawiyun arabiyun min tasnif Ibn Manzur. Ibn, Lisan al-Arab is an encyclopedia, an Arabic encyclopedia. And in there, the author is Ibn Manzur al-Ansari. So he states in there, Anas qad yukunu min al ins wa min al jin. He states that Anas can be referred to mankind and jinn. However, if they come together, then they have different meanings. You understand? So, like min al jinnati wa nas here is referred to two different things. But nas on its own, it carries the meaning of both. Also, we have the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. Tabaraka alladhi nazal al-furqan ala abdihi li yakoon lil-alamina nazira. Surat al-furqan verse 1. Allah, the exalted and blessed states, blessed be he who sent down the criterion, meaning the Quran, to his slave that he may be a warner to the alameen. Alameen here, as we will take, means mankind and jinn. Proof of that is the statement of Alam al Qurtabi, Rahimallah Ta'ala, fi al Jami al Ahli Ahkam al Quran. In his tafsir, brings the narration of Ibn Abbas, Radiallah Ta'ala Anhuma, where Ibn Abbas he mentions. Al-Alamun Al-Jinn Wal-Ins So this Alamin Carries the meaning of Jinn Wal-Ins And this is why It's imperative uh, My brothers and my sisters That whenever we look to Tafsir of Quran We look to the Tafsir From the Kalam of the Salaf And from the head of them Are the Sahaba Because they are the ones that witnessed and lived with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while revelation came down. Anything which was not clear, they questioned and he clarified. So they had the pure, correct understanding of every single verse. So this is why we advise, and our Sheikh, Sheikh Rabi, likewise advise when it comes to tafasir, then you read the tafasir of those people of the Sunnah and of the Salaf. From them, Ibn Kathir, his tafsir. Al-Imam Al-Baghawi, Al-Qurtabi, these are tafasir of the Salaf because in it you have narrations of the Sahaba explaining, like here, what is the intent of Alameen? It means jinn and mankind. And uh, Al Imam Qurtubi says that the, 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 the dalil that Ibn Abbas uses is that statement, Mahal al Shaid, li yukuna lil alamina nadira, that he will be a warner to the Alameen. In that day, the alameen is jinn and mankind. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ نَذِيرًا لِلْبَهَائِمْ إِنْتَهَا كَلَامَهُ He said, and he was not a warner to the animals. When you say alameen, it is not understood that he was a warner to the animals. So that entails uh, jinn and mankind. Also, وَمِنْ عَدِلَةِ الْبِحْفَتِهِ لِلْثَقَلَيْنِ مِنْ سُنَّتِهِ Now, we're going to bring proofs from the sunnah his message was both to
to jinn and mankind. Also, thakalain, whenever you have thakalain, then it refers to jinn and mankind. That Arabic word thakalain is referring to jinn and mankind. So the proofs from the Sunnah, ما أخرجه الشيخان في صحيحين أو في صحيحين من حديث جابر أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أعطيت خمسا لم يعطهن أحد قبلي وذكر من ذلك وكان النبي يبعث إلى قومه خاصة وبعثت إلى الناس عامة So the first hadith that we're going to take is what is mentioned in the Sahihain. But this love, the love is for Bukhari. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have been granted five things which were not given to anyone else before me. And from those five things, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Every prophet used to be sent to his nation only, exclusively to his nation. But I have been sent to all of mankind. So that's the shahid. I have been sent to all of mankind. Regarding this hadith, Al Hafiz ibn Hajar mentions in Fathul Bari. Fathul Bari is an explanation of Sahih Bukhari. So Al-Hafiz Ibn Hajar, he says, his statement, Bu'ithu ila nas amma, his statement that I was sent to all of mankind, he says that, fi riwayat al-Muslim, there is ziyada. In the narration of Muslim, it mentions, Bu'ithu ila kulli ahmar wal aswad. I was sent to the, all of the red and the black people. Some people translate red as white as well. Wal murad and the intent bil ahmar with red al ajum, the non Arabs. Wa bil aswad, ahl al ilm have said, is the Arab. However, some of the scholars have also said, wal kil al ahmar is ins, is mankind. Well, aswad is the jinn. So these are further proofs. Kalam from al Hafib ibn Ajar, uh, Hajar regarding jinn and mankind. So the hadith that we have just taken, now where is the mahal al-shahid? Huh? No. The part of the hadith, which is a proof. If I said to you, give me a proof that the Messenger was sent to jinn and mankind, what would you say? The Messenger was given five, and from those five, he was sent to all of mankind. And that all of mankind, as Ahl al-Ilm and the Salaf have said, means jinn and mankind. Okay. MashaAllah. Ulama. Taib. The second proof now is taken from Sahih Muslim as well is the hadith of Abu Huraira where the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said fudiltu ala al-anbiya bis-sit u'titu jawam al-kalim wa nusirtu bil-ru'b wa uhillat li al-ghanaim wa ju'ilat li al-ard tuhuran wa masjida wa ursiltu ila al-khalqi kafa wa khutima biya al-nabiyyun طيب. Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih and this is the hadith of Abu Huraira that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said I have been favored over other prophets with six, six aspects six things I have been given concise speech concise speech Jawami al-Kalim it means few words the messenger has few words in his sentences and his wordings but those few words are vast in meaning. 
The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was blessed with that. That is referred to as Jawami Kelim. Okay? Also, he said, but I have been aided with a rub, a, a rub, which is the fear and terror that enters into the hearts of the enemies. So the enemies, and some of the narrations men mention Masiratu Shahr, that it was a distance of a month. So the distance that it would take you to travel one month, that distance there, the enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the fear of the Muslims would already enter their hearts. And it's clear that you can see in our time that that doesn't exist. And Allah knows best. We can only make dua that Allah Azza wa Jal returns that. But it's like the enemy has no fear of the Muslims now. Allahu Musta'an. But that is one of the gifts that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given. I'm going to translate the hadith. I'm waiting for you lot to say to me, where is the shahid? Taib, has it come yet? Are you sure? Is it come? Okay. It has. <laughs> MashaAllah. Abu Jamal has got faham. MashaAllah. Is it? All right then. The next one is that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was granted the spoils of war. It was made lawful for him to take from the spoils of war. Also the earth, Al-Ard, has been made a means of purification. We can do tayammum. Also, it is a place to offer prayer. We can pray anywhere when salah comes in, except for the few places that has made an exception, but generally we can pray anywhere. And I have been sent to all of mankind. Huh? That's the shahid ascent. I have been sent to all of mankind. And the line of the prophets end with me. <laughs> huh? No, it's all in one sentence. Now, <clears throat> the Sheikh then he said, as for his statement, I have been sent to all of mankind. This is a clear indication. He was sent to jinn and mankind. It is a narration which is clear and comprehensive as Hafiz bin Hajar has mentioned. Also the Sheikh, he goes on to mention وكذلك بالتأمل في سنته العملية يظهر ذلك جلية Also, by contemplating the actions now of the sunnah, his actions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is clear that he indicates his call was to mankind. You see that he called the disbelievers of Quraysh, they are mankind, and to other than them. And he also called to the jinn. And this is evident to the one who ponders over the Quran, Surat al Jinn, and the other stories that are mentioned in Sahih al Bukhari regarding the jinn. The Shaykh, he just stops there, but I thought we will mention those verses, inshallah. Tamam? So, what the Shaykh is now saying, even if we look at the Sunnah, his actual actions, if we look at the stories, shows and it's clear that not only did he call to, uh, to mankind, he also called to the jinn. Tayb, Surat al Ahqaf. Verse 29 to 32. It's not in the book, but I thought I'll bring it. The statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَإِذَا صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفْرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ And remember, we sent to you, O Muhammad, نَفْرًا A group of jinn. نَفْرًا is between 3 to 10. يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوا قَالُوا أَنْسَتُوا These jinn, they came and they was listening to the Qur'an. And when they stood in presence thereof, they said, listen, said, listen in silence. 
فلما قضي ولوا إلى قومه منذرين and when it was finished they returned to the people as warners they went to the people as warners قالوا يا قومنا إن سمعنا كتابا أنزل من بعد موسى مصدقا لما بين يدي يحدي إلى الحق وإلى طريق مستقيم they said that verily they said oh our people or our people verily we have a book sent down after Musa confirming what came before it it, gu it guides to the truth and to the straight path so those of you that wish to go back to that surah surah al-ahqaf there is more verse 29 to 32 it gives you in detail and also in Sahih Bukhari gives you the story of when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Ta'if and on the way back from Ta'if then he recited and the jinn they heard this. But the shahid is that in these verses and even the ahadith it mentions that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also in Surah Al-Jinn the first verse and the second verse قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِنَ الْجِنْ فَقَالُوا إِنَّ سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا يَحْدِي إِلَى الرُّشْدِ فَآمَنَّ بِهِ When the jinn, the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, uh, when it was said to the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, it has been revealed to me that a group of jinn listen to this Qur'an. They said, verily, we have heard a remarkable recitation, this Qur'an. It guides to the right path and we have believed therein. So these are proofs that Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari was referring to that is clear if you look into the Quran and the Sunnah, there is much mention of jinn. And that the message is also to them as well. How long have we been speaking? 48 minutes. Khalas, we'll, we'll, we'll round up off this note, but the fifth, I'll write down the fifth one, but we won't go into it because it's pretty long. But just write down the chapter heading. The fifth matter. Would, the fifth matter is في وجوب الإيمان بأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قد بلغ الرسالة وأكملها. That's the fifth matter. The obligation to believe the Prophet conveyed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the message in totality upon excellence and clarity. And inshallah, we'll stop on that note and we'll continue next week, inshallah. The next lesson will be Friday, inshallah. So alhamdulillah, this particular lesson, there was much evidence is given. So I hope that you can go back and inshallah, memorize them or at least become familiar with these evidences. Jazakum Allahu khairan wa naktakfi bi hadha al-qadr wa sallallahu wa barik ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.